Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. And as a part of this, we are still in Chapter 2, moving into the next segment that is 2.3 AutoSAR, where AutoSAR generally stands for Automotive Open Software and System Architecture. As a part of this particular segment, we have three topics, but all of them are at K1. So as a part of this tutorial, we will be covering them all together. The topics we will be covering are 2.3.1, Objectives of AutoSAR, 2.3.2, General Structure of AutoSAR, 2.3.3, Influence of AutoSAR on the work of the tester. Let's begin with the basic introduction to what exactly AutoSAR is. When you talk about the AutoSAR, obviously it is an acronym for Automotive Open System Architecture, which generally comprises of all the architecture which are related to your entire automotive products. So, and the development partnership behind it, which was the main thing what made it so popular. This partnership was established in 2003 and includes mainly producers and suppliers of the automotive industry. The goal of the partnership was to create and establish a freely available standard for the software architecture. As we do all understand that a uh, solid product and quality of a product heavily relies on the architecture of that. If the architecture is not so great, then probably definitely you'll have a very bad implementation and as well as a very bad testing of that in order to find what exactly the customer wants. So architecture is just like the core of everything, the structure. And if the structure is not as expected, probably everything else relies on that. Even if you relate this uh, statement with your constructions of houses, you do understand that how important your structure is. If the structure is not so great, obviously you might not have that strength, that quality in the final outcome or end product. Therefore, this standard is aimed at addressing the increasing importance and complexity of the software from the automotive industry. Today, AutoSAR is a globally established standard for e and &E systems. Therefore, the tester will certainly come into contact with the products of AutoSAR and Thus, it is important for testers to know the objectives, the basic design, and points of the contact with the tester's work. So as a part of this tutorial, we'll be covering all three of them. That what is the objective, what are the basic design, and of course, what kind of impact or influence does it have on the tester's work. The very first thing to talk about is the objectives related to AutoSAR. That what are the key objectives? Why should we have AutoSAR and how does it help you to add value to your automotive industry? The following point uh, project objectives for AutoSAR are led by the principle collaboration in the standard, competition in the implementation. That means it generally says that collaborate with various other standards in order to compete with the best implementation possible for doing the quality work as a part of the automotive industry. Number one, so these are at K1 level, okay? Don't, so thus does not require any kind of justification. All you have to do is remember them as a part of the objective and all other topics as well, the same. So all are K1, so you just have to remember them. So the objectives include, supports the transferability or portability of the software. That means one platform to another, you can have it. You can use it in any different environment supports the scalability to different vehicle and platform variants that's what the portability is all about supports different functional domains definition of an open architecture that is maintainable as well as adjustable and expandable as well if required the people can also modify it to their required extent supports the development of reliable systems such like characterizing by availability reliability safety and a lot many other things, including integrity and maintainability. Supports the sustainable use of natural resources. Whatever is available can be equipped and utilized. Supports the collaboration between the various partners, as the AutoSAR stands for that, and standardization of the basic software functionality of the automotive electronic control units, ECUs, right? So ECUs are hub or the core or the heart of the automobile. Thus, ECUs plays a very vital role there and support of applicable automotive standards for vehicles and state-of-art technology. That means AutoSAR is ready to accept any other standards which are associated with the automotive industry, like if you talk about ISO 26262 or if you have anything else like ASPICE, will be supported here. 
The next thing here we are talking about the what exactly general structure of autos are is. What do you mean by structure? Which generally gives you the idea that what exactly it comprises of. What is the basic structure of the autosar and how does it really work and allows you to meet all those objectives which were just discussed recently, right? So the architecture of the autosar consists of three separate layers. So it has broken or it is basically consisting of three layers. The layer that is independent from the hardware containing with the autosar software component in short also known as SWC. The hardware oriented layer which is from the point of integrating the software to the hardware and uh, with standardized basic software, so BSW. The abstraction layer with the AutoSAR runtime environment, that is RTE, where exactly it is going to be deployed and used. So runtime environment will be another constraint here. So this control the data exchange between the outside of the Tronic control units and implements it between the software component as well as between the software component and the basic software. So there are three different layers here, which we understand. One is definitely the independent from the hardware, which is SWC software components. Second is the hardware oriented layer, which is the basic software, and then the abstraction layer, which is the runtime environment. A further aspect is the AutoSAR methodology for the harmonizations of the development of control unit software. In this OEM, the supplier exchange information about description files through AutoSAR templates, and they are generally referred to as ARXML files. RXML files. What exactly happens here as a part of the exchange? The ECU configuration descriptions includes data for the integration of the SWC on the electronic control units. The system configuration description includes data for the integration of all control units in one vehicle. And ECU extracts includes the data from the system configuration description for a single ECU. So here are some of the aspects further beyond the basic layer that what exactly your autos are can be helpful for and can add more value in terms of exchanging information about description files through the autos are templates. Well, here's another thing. How exactly does autos are influence the you know, effectiveness of the work from the tester. And uh, when it comes to AutoSAR, the tester has to interact with AutoSAR at any point of time. So that AutoSAR will be helpful for them. Or we sometimes refer the architecture to derive a lot of our test cases and heavily re rely on uh, making sure that the quality is achieved from the architecture point of view. And for that, we need to understand how exactly AutoSAR can be related to the testing activities. So AutoSAR influences the work of tester, especially at the following test levels. For example, software component test and software integration test in a virtual environment. When you're working with the, you know, the simulators, with the help of uh, a virtual BSW, basic software and RTE runtime environment, a tester can test the software components of the application quite early. So you don't really have to wait for this product to be deployed in a real automotive or car and test them. But before that, you can definitely make use of uh, basic software and RTE to deploy the same thing and test it much earlier in the life cycle. Second, software test and software integration test in real control unit. Now, real control unit is, of course, the, from the real point of time. So here the tester gets access to the communication on the RTE. With this, the tester can measure the simulation, uh, the behavior of these software components at the runtime. The third one, the AutoSAR acceptance test, is a test of the software system which ensures the compliance of the AutoSAR functionality, that's the architecture point of view, at the communication and application level. The execution of AutoSAR acceptance test is optional. Generally, that's not mandatory, but yes, it, if it is done, it will add more value to your confirmations and the confidence. And the fourth one is system integration test, where you generally integrate your software and the hardware components put together. So functional integration and connection of different electronic control units, for, for example, also in the vehicle, you do have ECUs. By simulating missing, probably distributed functionalities, the tester can assess the system behavior much earlier in the life cycle. So Yes, AutoSAR helps a tester by many means in order to derive a lot of uh, scenarios in order to test it. And there are certain levels of testing which might be complicated if you do not have access to it much earlier. 
because later you might have already built up something and do not forget no matter whatever we are learning at the end of the day we are talking about cre creating safety critical systems and we have to be as sure as possible when it comes to understand the same you have a link in the description in order to understand more about what exactly autosar is if you are interested you can see more details about the autosar in the description there so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to answer them at any point of time till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning